How's it going? Uh, my name is Brian Lirio. I'm Infinite Lab Sponsored Athlete. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions over the last couple weeks about uh, differences in creatine sources. Um, in this one, we'll talk about five different ones. Basically, what creatine does is it floods your mitochondria and your cells with the amount of creatine phosphates that it needs to replace uh, ADP into ATP. And what that is, is when you have a adenosine triphosphate or ATP, um, when you're going for that muscle endurance, you'll usually rip the last phosphate off during those last three or four reps, or let's say a three rep max. And what you're looking at is the phosphates in the cell then replacing it, allowing you to continue your workout and continue with an increased level of endurance. So no, it's not water weight. And the only problem is as your body starts to produce this, or as you start to supplement it, holding water, depending on which creatine source you're using, can be an unfortunate byproduct. So um, the body can create creatine without a creatine source. So what a lot of people will do is they will, you know, increase their red meat source in the off season when they're not worried about looking full, but also looking not dry as they want to on stage. So what people will mostly do is increase the amount of red meat that they have in their diet, which will automatically allow the body to create some form of creatine naturally in the body. Now, moving into uh, workout supplements and the, the creatine link between the two, um, a lot of people will want to supplement extra creatine inside of their pre-workout. Now, unless you're using a stimulant-free, creatine-free pre-workout, a lot of times you have to look at how much they say is in each serving. Now, you also have to be careful with the words proprietary blend because we all know that means that basically what they're saying is you're going to get a certain amount of these chemicals or these products inside of this one centralized product, but there's no guarantee as to how much of this 5,000 milligrams you're actually going to get per scoop. So when you're looking at your pre-workouts and you're looking at adding a creatine source, make sure you know that you're either using one that won't cause you to hold water that you're either not worried about water retention or that you're not doubling the amount of the same, let's say, monohydrate because you're going to double the amount of water retention. And most of the time, unless you are used to taking in that much or you're in a load phase, you're really not going to be holding all the creatine as you probably should, but you will hold more water. Um, so the five main types that we're going to talk about first is monohydrate. Now, this is the one that most of the studies have been done on, and it's been around the longest, and um, it's also the naturally occurring creatine inside of the body that is caused by the digestion of red meat. Creatine monohydrate is also the least expensive, but at the same time, it can cause minor water retention, but it also is very proven and very easily attainable. Next is ethyl ester. All it is is an added ester inside of the creatine, and it's not only suggested to be absorbed better, but at the same time, it's also absorbed faster. So depending on when in your workout regimen or when in your pre or post workout regimen, you're actually trying to creatine time, depending on if you believe in creatine timing or not, you would want to look into the different types of ethyl ester or monohydrate. Next would be your crealkaline. Now, the most important part of this is that there's no loading phase. Every other creatine that you're going to look at, it's very important that most people are concerned with whether or not they're going to have to take a large amount in the first 7 to 14 days to make sure that they have enough to actually supplement their workout or if they're just wasting it. So crealkaline is the best because it doesn't need a preload phase and it's um, – been said that it can be absorbed just as well as ethyl ester and better than monohydrate. But again, as you get to these newer protein sources, or I'm sorry, these newer creatine sources, you're also going to have to look at how many studies have actually been done on each of them. And the amount of studies that have been done on monohydrate as opposed to the other creatine sources is just not there. But that doesn't mean that it isn't proven. It's just how you look at the data. So keep that in mind. Next is going to be your creatine HCL. Now, this increases uh, the volumization of the muscle fibers just as much as the other ones, as well as causing the response inside of your muscle fibers that when the central nervous system gives it the order to expand as you're lifting in your muscle fiber, it will cause it to continue to expand because that's what the HCL is telling your cells to tell your central nervous system to do. So a lot of times your workout capacity and the amount of recovery time that you need could be less with hydrochloride, or I'm sorry, uh, HCL, which hydrochloride. But at the same time, again, this is one of the newer ones, so the amount of studies that have been done on HCL as opposed to monohydrate a lot of times just don't add up. But there are many newer pre-workouts and newer creatine sources that are moving toward HCL simply because it's easier to be absorbed into the cell and there are studies that are showing that it also causes less water volumization. Um, 
The last one is micronized creatine. Now, this is basically monohydrate in a new form that causes the particles of monohydrate to be much smaller, causing them to be absorbed into the cell a whole lot easier. Now, it does cost a little extra, and it also has more water retention. So if this is an off-season type thing that you're looking for, a quick pre-workout absorb, uh, absorption of creatine, then maybe micronized is what you're looking for because it not only has the study backing of monohydrate, but it has the faster absorption rate as well as, you know, you're not really worried about water retention um, as much as you would be inside of your uh, workout season. So just to recap, if you're actually looking for volumization, strength, endurance, and recovery, and you're not close to a show, then look at what you want to look for is your importance on studies, load phases, and the amount of water retention that you're going to be looking at. If you're getting closer to a show, my advice would be looking at more hydrochloride or crealkaline, and then as soon as you get close enough to the show, any creatine is really not necessary once you're looking at moderate, right, uh, you know, hold and squeeze phases or you're looking at, you know, full body splits to actually get ready for the stage. So it's all up to you. Make your choice. Thanks.